number 31 is a quadratic trig equation. How do I know that? Because the tangent is squared, okay? Um, so that's, I mean, it's just like um, when your x is squared in a polynomial equation. That's a quadratic. Same thing here. Um, now, this is similar to the ticket out the door from Friday, where you had cosine on both sides. Well, here we have tangent squared on both sides. So our first step should be to get tangent squared on one side. We don't want it on both sides of the equation. One of them is negative, so I'm going to take advantage of that and add tangent squared to both sides. Okay, I started with two tangent squared and I added one, so now I have three tangents squared. And that minus three is there on the end. It's not with the theta because it's not inside parentheses. Okay, now our trig equation is on one side. We need to isolate it. So we begin by adding the three. So negative two plus three is one. Then we divide by three. So we've got one third is equal to tangent squared theta. And you may say, well, tangent doesn't equal one third. Okay, well, we don't have just plain tangent yet. We have tangent squared. So to get rid of that squared, we take the square root of both sides. Anytime we take a square root, we have to consider the positive and the negative. The square root of one is one. We can't take the square root of three. I mean, we can, but it's not a whole number, okay? Um, so, that means we need to rationalize that. When we rationalize one over the square root of three, you should be pretty used to this one by now. It's the square root of three over three. So the question is, where is the tangent equal to the square root of three over three? So that's when cosine is the square root of three over two. Okay, I know that because tangent sine over cosine, the square root of three needs to be on the bottom. So when the cosine is square root three over two, that's when tangent's gonna be square root three over three. So that's the part of six and it's plus and minus. So that's going to be in every single quadrant. It's when it's positive square root three over three and when it's negative square root three over three. So all we need to do here is list all of our pi over six angles. Pi over six, five pi over six, seven pi over six, and 11 pi over six. Four answers. I rationalized. Multiply by the square root of 3 on top and the bottom because we don't leave square roots in the bottom. Okay? So, several little pieces in there. Okay. How do you want it? Okay, because tangent is sine over cosine. Okay, so you're going to put the sine value over the cosine value. Well, if sine is the square root of 3 over 2, and you put that over 1 half, the square root of 3 is in the numerator, and the 2 is canceled. So that's where it's equal to the square root of 3. It's when cosine is square root of 3, the square root of 3 ends up in the denominator, which is what we need right now. Okay, let's look at 35. Okay, now... 35 has cosines on both sides, but take note, some of them are cosine squared, some of them are just plain cosine. So it's like when you have x squared and x's on other sides. Um, you need them all on one side, but you can't put them all together necessarily. So I'm going to move the 3 cosine squared here. It was negative, so that means I'm going to add it. So we have zero, it's very important to put that zero there, is equal to, now I like the squared term to come first, so negative one plus three is two, two cosine squared of theta plus the square root of three cosine of theta. Now when it comes to quadratic equations, what do we usually have to do to solve quadratic equations? Factor, okay? Well, how can we factor this expression right factor here? Out of a cosine. Very good. There's a GCF. They both have a cosine.
cosine. So we are going to factor out a cosine. Now they don't have anything in terms of a uh, coefficient in common. So all we can do is take out a cosine. So we are left with 2 cosine of theta plus the square root of 3. Now, after that point, what do we always do? After we factor, we set each piece equal to zero, right, and solve. So cosine of theta is equal to zero. Let's go ahead and just handle that part. Where is the cosine equal to zero? Pi over two and three pi over two. Cosine is equal to zero at pi over two and three pi over two. But to me, those are easy to think about, guys, because it's just cosine is the x-coordinate, so where is x equal to 0? Well, that's on the y-axis, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. All right, the other piece, 2 cosine of theta plus the square root of 3 is equal to 0. We need to isolate the cosine, so subtract the square root of 3. Divide by 2. So the question is, where is our cosine equal to negative 3 square roots of 2? Well, cosine is negative, where x is negative, so that's the second and the third, and it's equal to square root of 3 over 2 at pi over 6, so that would be 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. So here are the four choices. Now, you don't necessarily always have four solutions uh, with these trig uh, equations or with the quadratic trig equations. Most of the time you do, not all of the time. And actually, where's my paper? I think I want to show you one more. Um, Let's look at number 42. And let's look at number 42 as well. Um, one more type of factor you need to be aware of. Okay. Number 42 looks like this. Negative 2 sine squared of theta minus 2 is equal to 3 sine of theta minus 1. Okay, same deal here. We've got signs on both sides, so we need those all on one side. And really, this is a quadratic equation, so we need everything on one side. So I'm going to, ooh, you know what? I'm going to add the two sign squared, because that makes my quadratic term not negative. So two sine squared theta, and I'm also going to add the two, because everything needs to be on one side. So 0 is equal to positive 2 sine squared of theta plus 3 sine of theta plus 1. Okay. Now, this is different factoring than the problem we just did. The factoring we just did was a GCF. We can't do a GCF here because it's a trinomial. Okay. Now, sometimes this helps people Okay. to temporarily substitute for the trig function Let's just say, let's put an M in there, okay? Instead of the sine of theta, let's just put an M in there. It helps people see the trig, or it, see the factoring without the trig in the way, okay? All I've done is substitute an M for the sine of theta. That's going to allow me to factor this expression. That would be 2M plus 1 times M plus 1. And then when I set my factors equal to zero, I'm going to put the trig back in there. Okay, so I've got two sine of theta plus one is equal to zero, and I have the sine of theta plus one is equal to zero. Now, if throwing that extra variable in there throws you off, don't do it. Okay, I think it just it helps people see the factoring a little bit more easily without the trig function in there. Okay, and then we're just solving it like we did the previous problem. Subtract 1 from both sides, 2 sine of theta is equal to negative 1, divide by 2. Where is the sine equal to negative 1 half? Well, sine is our y, y is negative, and the third and the fourth, and it's equal to 1 half at our pi over 6 angles. So in the third and the fourth, that is 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. 
And I'm continuing to try and explain it like this so that this is how you're thinking about it without relying upon your unit circle all the time, okay? Because you aren't going to have it on the final exam. <clears throat> You've got to know some of these things. The other part of the equation, subtract 1 from both sides, sine of 30 is equal to negative 1. Where does that happen? Y. Yeah, it's the y. Y is negative 1 at 3 pi over 2. So this one has three solutions. 7 pi over 6, 3 pi over 2, and 11 pi over 6. It doesn't matter what order you list those solutions in. The answer key is going to put them in ascending order. So from the smallest angle up to the biggest angle. Not necessarily have them paired up with um, which piece they came from. Okay? 